that's a gift. Probability gets more complicated. So probability is super important because we're always trying to figure out what's going to happen in the future and there's uncertainty with respect to what's going to happen in the future. Now this uncertainty we say comes in degrees so I, I'm pretty sure that the sun will rise tomorrow. I'm pretty sure that I won't win the lottery, right, tomorrow, right? But I'm not certain that the sun will rise tomorrow, and I'm not certain that uh, I won't win the lottery. I don't play the lottery, but maybe someone gives me a birthday present or a ticket or whatever. It's not my birthday, but even if it were, weren't, they might mistakenly get me a birthday present that's a lottery ticket that wins. That could happen, right? Okay, so I probably won't win the lottery tomorrow. And so when we're talking about probability, we, if you've probably studied a little bit of this, some of you, the probability of an event can be quantified on a scale between zero and one. And we say that the impossible things have the probability zero. Right. So there are certain things that are just logically impossible, for example. And they have probability zero. Contradictions, for example, have probability zero. If it's absolutely certain that the event will take place, we say it has the probability one. So if I say, for example, tomorrow something will happen, that's a perfect prediction. Probability one, yeah, something will happen tomorrow. Yeah, that's certain. Something will happen tomorrow. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay, so that would be certain. Logical truths are also true, certainly. So we will either land on Mars by 2022, or we will not land on Mars by 2022. Probability of that coming out, true, is one, yes. We will either land on Mars by 2022 or not land on Mars by 2022. Yeah? So logically true sentences are certain. Make sense? Can't be wrong. Okay, so they have probability one, but everything else is somewhere between zero and one. And that's how we measure it. We just do that by convention. We say probability is the measure of likelihood. The probability of an event gets quantified on this scale and everything, like if, if it's higher probability of some event, it'll be closer to one. If it's lower probability, further away from one. So for example, if we have a fair coin, what is the probability of the fair coin when it's tossed coming up heads? Yes, 0.5, right in the middle. So 0.5 means given a large enough sample, half of the time the coin will come up heads. Yeah? Simple? Okay. But I toss the coin 10 times, it comes up tails. I need a bigger sample, I need a bigger sample Jacob says. Is that just, are you just, looking, is that some sort of confirmation bias, Jacob? Are you just looking for new evidence that's going to support your 0.5 prejudice? No, it's just that you can't take a sample that really just one flip is about 10%. You need to have more, so like one flip is like less than a percent. It's usually that it has to be a very large sample to get an accurate rating. Okay. Not quite right, but close enough. Yes. We'll, we'll take that as a yes for now. Good. Okay, other, other questions, challenges? <coughs> okay, how about when you roll the dice? But it chances that it comes up six. One in six, a sixth, right? What is a sixth in decimal place? One six six, yeah, repeating. Okay, how about two dice coming up one. 
zero <laughs> because you've got two dice, right? Yeah? So you, you have, it can't be one. What is it most likely to be with two dice? All clever. Seven, right? It's more likely to be seven that comes up as the value of two dice than any other numbers. Now, why is that? Think about it. Because there are more combinations of the two numbers that will add to seven than any other number. Does that make sense? So no combination of two dice being rolled will come up one, right? Because you've got two dice. Never comes up one with two dice, right? How many, how many times will you get two ones? Put away your phone. Two ones. Good. Two sixes. Right. But how about, how about eight? <coughs> how about three? Let's pick three. Three could be one and two. Huh? Sorry? 36. Yes. So it could be one and two. It could be, right? So you can think about all the combinations of the rolls of two dice, right? And if you drew them all out, if you wrote them all out, you would find that the largest number of them add to seven. So it's more likely that you'll get seven than any other number. So it makes sense? So if you have to bet, then you'd put, and if it was even money on all the numbers, you'd make money if you put down seven, if you bet seven, right? Okay. 